So your uh, your lucid experiences, were you discovering ways to trigger them? Because you said you kind of let the practice go. Uh, yeah, no, for sure. Found ways to uh, make them happen. A lot of it was actually just focusing on them and setting the intention before going to sleep. Mm -hmm. um, I will. It really was started with lucid dreaming, but it mostly turned into astral projection was my mm -hmm. main practice. Um, yeah. So it would be I would be going to sleep and right before I fell asleep, I'd say like I'd repeat to myself, I will astral project, I will astral project in my mind. And that would make them so much more likely also just staying very um, uh, active in dream recollection through writing down mm -hmm. most of my dreams just because we can have uh, these kinds of experiences, but if we can't remember them or recall them, they're really like, you it's know. It's hard to get back into. It's like dialing in on a radio. And it's mm -hmm. like you're keeping yourself dialed yeah. into that wavelength as you're able to yeah, remember absolutely. the dream realm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay, yeah. That's so a really helpful writing, bit of advice. Yeah. Writing down all your dreams, um, avoiding uh, cannabis really helped me, even though I do um, see the benefit in that medicine. Mm -hmm. uh, at the time, it would take me into very deep sleep. It does um, that. Yeah, yeah you're not in the rim it, territory nearly as much, are you? Yeah, so if uh, someone's trying to work with lucid dreaming or astral projection, highly recommend uh, making sure you uh, stay yeah, mostly so off of that uh, medicine. Yeah, yeah. Also, uh, questioning your reality throughout the day, doing reality checks. Mm. So even though, um, you know, we can say right now that we're sure we're, we're not asleep and that we're not dreaming, um, you just want to get into the habit of questioning because if you make it a habit, then you'll yeah. do it in dreams also and so i'd uh, what i would do is i would um try to put my finger on my palm and if it goes through my hand i'd know, know i'm Ooh, dreaming <laughs> or Whoa. something it would happen always yeah. so i would just be like hmm even though i'm like sure i'm not dreaming i'm just like am i dreaming right now and just like building up that habit of like asking that a few times a day then you'll start asking in your dreams and you'll see something weird happening and then you can um do uh you know start changing the dream being involved in it um those are the few little neat tricks. Just generally having it in the forefront of your mind, I feel like makes it more likely to happen. There's a lot of really great books on it if someone wants to get into them. Um, also, one of the biggest tips I found is that actually at night is not the most ideal time to lucid dream or astral project. Actually naps, especially in the morning, are the most ideal time. So when we're... Um, when we're really tired at night, our body just wants to go into deeper sleep or become largely unconscious, even in the dream realm. Um, versus if we wake up a little earlier than usual and we go back to sleep, um, that is where our body's already rested and we're more likely to go straight into uh, being able to call our dreams and lucid dream and work with the dream world. Okay, those are really mm -hmm. helpful tips. Okay, yeah, because I've watched videos, I've read books. Um, here and there on it and I've heard some of those tips um I really like your insight into cannabis that's very helpful because I've noticed uh when I'm smoking regularly that I'm not dreaming as much and, as, and anyone that smokes knows that as soon as you stop you notice your dreams a lot more again so For that's sure. really helpful um and I like the morning time that's really cool insight too so like a morning time nap um yeah that makes it's sense it's called uh the method's called waking back to sleep so you wake up ideally like a few years you wake up for example at like eight wake up at like six and stay up for about 15 minutes without looking at any bright screens or bright lights or do any heavy exercise just kind of relax just kind of hang out for like 15 minutes with the lights like nice and low windows closed and then go back to sleep and try to stay conscious try to like stay still and watch your body fall asleep but try to keep conscious and usually that is by far the best time to to do it okay awesome so cool um, one of my first uh, lucid dreaming experiences not my very first but i think my second or third was like a nightmare experience as well and i remember uh being chased by some figures in these old abandoned city buildings and they were running after me kind of like uh, Mr. Smith guys in the Matrix. <laughs> and they kept catching up to me. They were really fast and I kept just barely like scrambling away. And I thought to myself like, this isn't fair. This doesn't make sense. I should be able to do what they can do. And I remember like becoming lucid enough to 
take control of the dream and turn that nightmare into a heroic moment where I was then able to run up, run down the hallways, like on the walls to take corners. And I jumped down an elevator shaft, flipping and grabbing and uh, leaped out of a window. And I was going to go warn all my friends now. And um, that wasn't a fully lucid dream, but it was definitely a lucid experience where one was able to take control. And then I, I have become fully lucid before to where I, I got to experience flight. Um, but I've only had a few of these experiences. So that's really fascinating to, to meet someone that was able to become really well versed with them at a young age. And so that that really opened you up to your spiritual path and your spiritual journey, huh? Yeah, absolutely. The med the meditations. And, yeah, uh, like leaving the body at such a young age and just seeing yourself outside of your body and going around um it it's impossible to to not feel like there's so much more to this reality than what we're told and what we see so um that just sparked an interest like i for sure i'm experiencing these things that are so beyond what people talk about and what people think is possible uh it's guaranteed that there's more and that's when i started you know exploring like okay what other altered states and things are people not talking about that are possible Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so you said you went and you met with Buddha in the light realms. How old were you when you were doing this? I must have been around 15 and that was one of the most beautiful experiences ever. Um, it was, um, I exited my body and it always starts in my, wherever my body's at. So usually it was my room and, uh, I asked for an astral guide, uh, and someone appeared and I asked them, can you please take me to the Buddha? Um, so I followed them and they took me to this realm of pure light. Uh, and there was the Buddha sitting in meditation with his eyes low. And I was so excited as a, like a young teenager. I had so many questions because uh, I had been reading so much about Buddhism. I wanted to ask the Buddha all these questions. But as soon as I was in his presence, they all fell away and his peace um, his serenity just answered everything for me. And I just stood there and just observed and just was in deep peace. And that was the, the experience. Wow. Wow. That's beautiful. That's really beautiful. Are there any other unique lucid or astral uh, experiences that you've had? So um, recently, the last few um, ways I was working with the astral realm, was through hypnosis. So I would um, do hypnosis, um, like self-hypnosis through, um, there's a, a great hypnosis person called Michael Sealing on YouTube. And he does uh, a lot of various ones. He has lucid dreaming ones. Um, he has ones on past life. So I would uh, do hypnosis sessions um, to uh, experience my past lives, uh, which gave me a lot of insight on where I'm at right now and what I'm trying to do as a soul and why I create the art that I create. So that was one of the most profound experiences was uh, recalling my most recent past life for sure through um, through the astral realm, through um, that kind of technique. Wow. Wow. So that really helped you orient your understanding of where you are now, why you are now and how your art can be working in the world. Yeah. That, that brings us to your art. <laughs> 